three. I'll be leave you just in a second. One thing I don't understand is why do these recorders have AA batteries and why don't I have something bigger? Something that we could work with. Um oh well, they run out very quickly. Thing about up there, there's another mic because sometimes mics fail, and then you learn the hard way. Oh, well, I learned the hard way. Oi, oh, thank you for taking the time and thank you for actually checking back uh, into my next series. If you're new to the channel, well, welcome, guys. I'm, I'm Chris, I'm a JavaScript buddy, and I've been doing JavaScript for a couple of years now, and these videos are basically trying to show and um, share my skills of what I've learned uh, building complex Angular apps and React apps. So you would see now my screen hopefully appears and I, I, I'm able to map it and it's all big font. So I've already kicked off lesson one. If you haven't seen that one, have a check. I think there's a link below. I always do a, 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 a previous episode and next episode. Much more easier to link them up. And we just pushed up to lesson one and I'm going to do a git check out um, that should be lesson two and lesson two so we got our uh, angular and react uh, oopsie yeah could be lesson Boom, switch it, switch it, switch it. Fine. So, I forgot the subject. House is in a mess. I cut the, I've done these cuts so I can do cut, take one, cut, take two. And um, yeah, today's session is about components in React versus Angular. Now, it's a subject that you can start without creating uh, components and going into smart and dumb, which I've done before. But I think today I want to go deeper in level and start the basics. And the basics I mean to work it through um, explaining more about JavaScript and how the actually classes work. So if, when you understand how the class works, then we can get into the component and then we can understand how do we structure components. I think it's a big subject and a big topic that um, I've not seen much taken on board and I want to in detail explain these fine bits. So what I've done is, you should see a screen coming up and what I've done, so it's the same React and Angular. I've created a, an Angular Lesson 2 branch and a React Ang uh, Lesson 2 branch. So in my React project, as this is more going to be referencing to React, uh, same goes with Angular. It's just a little bit understanding. I'm going to create a little file here which will be video, uh, which I'll add is notes.js. And how should I run this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through my terminal and I'm going to use node. Uh, you can use, I, I don't know, online editors that you can play around with. I normally play in my computer locally. Um, I'm going to use node. Uh, double check my audio is working. I've done that before. And yeah, so I'm just going to do, let's do a quick check, test, node, uh, notes.js, wrong mistake. Yes, so that just kicks through that saying good, uh, I'll just do a console log, you got it, buddy. Beautiful, so that no terminal is working and it's console logging me out while I'm doing my JS. Right, I've got some notes down, so I'm, I'm, I'm I know what I want to explain or I want to talk about, so I just want to kick it off uh, uh, straight up, go ahead into it. Classes, big subject. Um, classes, basically a blueprint for objects. And in the class, you normally, what would you see? You would see a variable um, and you would see a method, which is a function. So let's kick it off. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Let's. So how do you start a class? Uh, with the keywords class, and then we need a name. I think we can keep the same, bananas. 
There you go. You have started your class. This is a thing everybody's seen it, and you can do this dot color. Ooh, no. Yellow. Yep. I don't need to do this here because I'm not signing it. And now if I run note, no mistakes. Beautiful. My, I got my class with my first property. Color equals yellow. Now, what's next? A method. A method, what kind of method can bananas class contain? An add method. Now, this is about functioning here. And this, what I wanted to mention is... Functions, add. And what I want to do is... Here I've set my simple uh, method called add. What does that do? Add will take an integer and it will return me um, count this dot count plus i. I don't have a count, so I can define a count here, which would be zero. You've got you've got a class with a method returning, and this this is well, another thing that I want to talk about talk, uh, when talking about classes is the referencing of um, I'm just going to close the side so it's got more space here and more space for you here. Arrow's function has sorted out the biggest issue that I always had in JavaScript, and that is when you write in JavaScript you have this um, where you're not referencing in the right positions or right places, and this is uh, Arrow's the way it returns it. It's very you know you're always referencing the right uh, this basically uh, this state now you've got your properties you've got your methods what else i want to mention ah i need to a little bit add some uh, subjects i know what i'm talking about it's a class inherit inheritance and uh, double check. I need to double check if I spell it correctly. Did I spell it? Did I spell it? I'm just double checking. So the end, Harry. Okay. Live and learn. Inheritance. That's another thing I want to talk about. And I want to talk about initialization. Double check. You can see my grammar not always unsure if I'm doing it right or wrong. So about now that I've got these subjects out of the way, what's a class? What's a class? How to initialize it and how 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 to extend. Uh, AKA Inheritance. Three seven. How do you initialize a class? So this is what you normally see. You would have a const would say my function. Well, my bananas uh, function, and that would you initialize it with the word new, and you would have bananas. With the word new, you initialize the class that you have above, and then. Let's console log this little uh, little thing out, and you can my bananas dot. It will show you straight away what you can access dot add, and you would pass in a integer, and this integer would be three. Now, ah, I spot a little thing here of a mistake. So instead of returning this, what actually you need to do here is go this dot count, and so you're referencing this count, and you're assigning this count plus your integer, and then you're just going to return the total count back to the function. And that way you're storing this count up here, which is uh, 3. So 0 plus 3 will have a 3. Um, let's console that out. No dot. Was it test? No. Not. Dot JS. That is a 3. And then if I add a 1. Now that's a 4. So you can see every time I initialize, I initialize, I run the file from the beginning. So three was the first time, four is the next time, and so on, and so on, and so on. If I don't do this, and if I just do this, I assume you guys know this. 
just clear it and I go Node.js 3 and 1. So 3, it goes 3 plus 0 is 3, 1 plus 0 is 1. It, it keeps the same, it doesn't keep the count. So just return this back, beautiful. Okay, so we got there. Um, how do we initialize a, a class? Now inheritance, inheritance I assume you've heard of it and you, I think it's, I keep always forgetting the name, I think it's called prototyp, prototypo, uh, prototypo, prototypo, prototypo JavaScript inheritance, uh, inheritance, I learned that word today, with one N. Um, ah, prototypal. That's the word, not the prototype. It goes through prototype, but it's prototypal. Another thing I need to, some wordings. So prototypal. Prototypal? Prototypal? Who cares? Um, main thing you know how to code, right? Um, so how do you do it? So class bananas, what would extend it is maybe a location. You would can have a class, which is location that extends a class bananas. Sounds good. Now, did I put it here? You can have, as a class, you can have a constructor and you can initialize these when the class gets initialized. Now, if you do this, you're gonna get an error. I'm just gonna console log out this for you so you don't get confused. Color is not defined because it's trying to assign it to a a bananas class a property color but does not exist so what you need to do is reference it to this and reference it to this if you do that it's all perfectly nice for you okay get back to this um i'll now i'll get to the point of why this is whole thing to understand so if i have a constructor here and constructor and then let's have another method which is basically a location would be a, well, I could have a property here, country, right? A country can be, for now, it's not available because I don't know it. Well, so that's a country. Oh, well, let's say it has country right now, which is basically just an empty string. But um, add country. And that will be the name of it. There's also the good thing about arrows. You can, if it's one, um, if it's one uh, property, you can do also do this, and then you can shorthand this very nicely if you want to. So normally we do have to do um, return. Basically, you would have this country. Sign the name and then you return. Well, if you want to return, you return this country, right? I'll just remove the construction for now to uh, tell you about the subject. So I would have um, just trying to figure out what should be next. Okay, um, just put my function for now. I think that's fine. Um, location. And then you can assign my function. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Add country, oops. Add country, which can be Latvia. No reason. Just made it Latvia for fun. And console log out here beautifully. Let's see the run test of it. Location. Forgot to initialize it properly. You get three, four, and you get Latvia, which is basically it adding the country name. Now, what I was thinking. Why did I mention this? Constructor. I want to remove these console logs here to not confuse you guys. And if 
I want to do, if I want to log out, not the country, color, it will turn you yellow. Now, if you're doing, now this one, now if I'm, re, now you got a return of the, the um, inherited class, but the thing is, if I have a constructor, and I run it, must call a super in the word class before accessing this. So this is what you, this one was mentioned about. You need to run the super in the child or in the one that it's inheriting it to, for it correctly to initialize the constructor here. Now that you've initialized this constructor correctly, we have the super class, where is the super class here? If you run it, it gives you yellow. But what you can do is yellow, oh not yellow, color, um, and I turn it to well green. Banner's not is it ready. Ooh, my chair's ready. Green. Refresh it. Color's not defined. Excuse me, moi. Green. So what happened? This color has all written this colors. So it, 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 over, it overtook the properties and the methods of the parent class and it overwrit it. Now this is, okay, I'll leave these console logs for you guys here. I think this is fun for you guys to have a look. This is about classes uh, and talking about extending it. So um, a lot of things, well, this now back to the, well, the framework and the library, I think. Um, which you need to get uh, more understanding. I was literally rumbling for the next 20 minutes in this series. You can see my energy just going <laughs> Basically, I've been a lot of hours in the video and you can see in the last minute, my brain was not clicking. I was trying to put the thought together and it was just not there. Basically, what I want to do is I'm trying to explain you JavaScript or the basics of creating classes in JavaScript because you can, in React, you can use a lot of the extend word to extend the component and then all the lifecycle hooks follow with that. And you have to get used to, you have to know the experience of working with extending a class because you'll get the issues into super, you'll get the issues of initializing a class properly. Uh, whereas in Angular, well, normally what you do is you use the implement, you implement the hooks you need, the lifecycle hooks, so ng on it, ng destroy, ng um, on changes, and that's it. And it all works perfectly. You don't get a lot of these troubles. Whereas React, you get common these problems of extending it Whereas in React, you get these problems of extending it and extending it incorrectly. Um, in Angular, sometimes you can see the extension. You can extend like um, charts I've seen before. I've done it in my personal as well. Um, but I hope that the energy in the next series or in this series, I hope the energy in this series that we picks up as it goes along. So what's following is me using the ngcli command line and explaining you how you can create components in Angular, how to structure them properly, and what's the best way of doing it. I'll leave it to Chris. So, in Angular, you have a command line. So, in Angular, you would have a command line. This is for video. I think this is command lines video one. I'll have it here. And then what I'll do is I'll create a command line video two. And now, these command lines I want to talk about today is ng, g, and c4. Um, c4 creating a component. So, to create a component in uh, Angular, you need a command line ngc, c, uh, ng CLI line, g for generally, c for component, and then the name the name of your component, which let's say would be, um, what can we call it? We can call it as a um, header, and this is the header component that's responsible for header. So ngc. That would generate me a component, and it will create a component right here. Header component. And we have all these three files: a TypeScript file, a, uh, a HTML file that we talked about, and, and CSS file. Now you would see in a Angular, you would see a three things in a decorative component. You would see a selector, a template URL, and a style URL. I think I've mentioned something before, Siri, in a previous episode. So this gets uh, compiled into one string and put in here. Whereas in React, it's a little bit different the way it renders it. And compile it. So, 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 <laughs> so here you can see our class, what we mentioned about a header component, 
implements on on it. Now this is the thing in Angular when it implements on on it, you actually bringing a uh, method from it, which is ng on it, and that is when you initialize the component. Now app header is a selector that you can use in your other components to reference it. So if I go to my app component and I just output these here, save it, you will see header works. And that is default when you're generating any component in Angular. It will, it will generate an HTML saying component name works. Now that's a component, a simple basic component in Angular. In React on the other side, what you do is, I'm just gonna flip this here. There's a reason why I documented this for the React video notes is, that's why you get guys get a little bit um, on the React side is, app.js file, you've got your class uh, component here, which is app and it extends a component. It also brings in the life cycles. Life cycles have changed in the versions. Um, those is another subject I'd like to talk to you about. But here I have to manually create a new file and with a capital I would call it header.js. Did I put it in the right folder? Nope, put it right here. Woo. Cancel, Woo. move it there. Header.js, so what do we do in header.js? Well, well, first thing is import and export, right? So you, what you do is you're importing React from a React library for things to work. And then what you do is you create your class, which is a banana, no, stop it. <laughs> header class, um, which for now uh, extends a component, no, component, beautiful. And see my ID straight away imported the component from React. And then what you actually need to do is you need to export whoop, default header. Now you're exporting it. Now this is your class component. You can, um, so you need to create, uh, in Angular you don't have to do it. So in Angular you would have already already implement this HTML, pull it in from the header.component.html. Uh, header Here you would actually need to write uh, a, a standardized method that brings, uh, the function is render, and then it will return you the JSX, um, HTML, which is basically this, which needs to be wrapped in one single HTML uh, tag. So, hello. Oh, so we can do the same standard header works just for fun. Yeah. And if we would like to import this now, what you need to do is header. You have to go to your app.js. You have to go import header from dot header JS. And then you can do your single quotes. Like you don't have to do, uh, if you wanna wrap it in something, then you can do like this if you're wrapping it. But if you're not, then you just do header like that. And now if you go into React world, doo -doo 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 -doo, this works. Now this is the div here, this is the div. And this is a string, it doesn't get interpreted correctly. Oops, oops. Because I'm passed it as a string and that's a mistake. So here, I passed it as a string and hence why it didn't render the div. I didn't return it back. Now, there you go, header works. If I inspect it, you've got, yes I can, and I've got my div that my component gets pulled in. Now, if I look in my Angular side, Your app header and then my p tag, which is what the Angular wraps it in. But I'm going to do this, and I'm just going to do it. Pull, it pulls the same app header div here, and it assigns these ng context out, which is it assigns its uh, unique ID uh, for each of these um, components. Right, so this is the way you create a component in Angular and this is the way you can create a component in React. Now, the subject that I wanted to talk to you about, which was in my Node.js, is the differences with a smart and dumb component, container versus a component, and stateful versus stateless. I think understanding of a component and a class, first understanding how a class uh, works, 
understanding how you extend it, understanding about the initialization and inheritance. Now we can move into about uh, creating a components and actually structuring those components properly. Which I believe is another big subject, but let's, I think the video was, was the difference uh, component in React and Angular, and I think we might as well kick this off and, and, and uh, focus on it. Double check on the time. Perfect, let's continue. Finishing React. Okay, so moving now to Angular about components in Angular. I think I'm gonna to start to stitch up these videos nicely because what happened is I just continued into spaying Angular and I think what happened is I went in too depth of a material. So I'm now want to see if I can cut this into the video and guys, it makes sense. I hope it does make sense. Um, I want to explain about components in Angular as this class is more about components. So in Angular, I've added a new some text here uh, about creating a, I'll just minimize this for you. In my readme file, I've created things called features. Now, features, if you think about Angular, Angular is MVC, it's all about module, views, controllers. Everything is very really modularized. And module is basically a snippets of responsibility only for one specific reason. And then you can inject that module into another module to expand its more responsibilities. Hence why you can reuse the code. Features. I call them features because if you think about an application like Bananas, you would have you have the core app, you would then have the dashboard, you would have users, you have products, cart, and transactions, right? Each of those features are normally would have certain folder structures, layout, containers, components, and the reference to the module. This module contains all of these folders. The same for the dashboard, and so on, so on. Difference between a container and a component. Now, all of this is components. Oh, for all of this is classes. Yeah, all of this is components, all components are classes, all classes actually are objects in JavaScript. Simple basic thing out of the way, where the whole point is, uh, the naming is where do you structure your stuff and it's all based on responsibility. You, in your containers you normally have your smart component which is basically managing your data and in your components you would have your dummy HTML data which basically is your UI library just rendering. It goes nothing or it doesn't know anything about state. All it does, it gets the data from the container and it renders it. And that's how it works normally. Um, you would see another thing here. You would have um, directives, services, and state. And state, um, I use NGRX for state management. And there's different ways of using state in Angular, but I think it's a bigger subject that I would like to cover in the next lesson. On some lessons forward up. Directives and services are just helpers. So uh, services would normally just call HTTP. Directors will help you with the HTML. Um, but these are all components. And the difference in a component in a, uh, in a React is you would have your HTTP in an effect that you would call above in the component, which I'll show you shortly, or I think best I'll show you in another class. Next one, for sure. But for now, this is the normal structure I would have as in one feature. So I would have a layout, a container, and a components, which is the dumb components. And these are normally what they're also called is in React is state ls. And what you call it in uh, Angular uh, or state full in React as well. Or in Angular, you call them containers and components or smart and dumb. Or you can also say, I'll just call it like a smart. I think, dumb. I, think I shouldn't do this because um, the editor will change it. Smart and dumb. Right, so what, what I'm going to do here is in my app folder, which is my default one, let's start with the basic one. I'm just going to save this. Let's start the basic one and let's do an ngg to generate something and you can generate a class, a component, and you can specify the folder show in the first path, so layout, and I would call it um, default layout. So that's the default layout. Then I'll generate another one for the containers. And as a container, I would have, for example, a header. This structure may change in, in time later on, but guys, I think for now I'm just keeping it this way because I haven't got a real design in my head. And maybe, boom, 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 a sidebar. And for the component, I would have, for example, a navigation. 
I think that's basically it. So this all, while it's being created here, components, containers, these are all been adding to my app module and it's been declaring it here. So in modules, you can declare these components here. Now, one thing about layout component for now to start off, I can take the app default layout component and my app component here, I can specify it here. For now, we're not gonna use routing. But I'll explain routing in the next, next lesson. I think it's a very important thing. So app default would render me delete this delete this that's react so it would render me default works and what I would do is I'll go to default component um, which is the layout and you normally would structure it how you would have a header I'll do that automatically I don't want to do that a body oops don't want to do that and a footer and then you have a body and dash sidebar and for these would be your normally con uh, containers. I'll call them containers. So if you refresh here, it renders you the HTML. But for the header component, we do have a header component. I can take the selector. And I can go on default and I can do whoop, like this. Beautiful. But it's taking me the HTML. I don't want the HTML header. I want the app dash header selector. And then for the sidebar, I can do app dot side. Let's let's have a look at the app, app sidebar. App sidebar. So that should now render these components into my list. Header works, sidebar works, footer and body. Now, body would normally be here a different div. It would be literally what I would here normally render is the, well mentioned, the root outlet. The, uh, basically, lo lo um, load dynamic uh, data here. And I'll have my sidebar. And I think, and in the app header, what I would do is if I go in the app header container, which is here. I would actually pull in the navigation. So if I go in for my navigation, oh, my header. So you would have a logo, let's say, and you would have a maybe app navigation. You can see how app navigation gets pulled into app navigation, which is a component, get pulled into my header component and then my header component gets pulled into my layout component. And they all are responsible for different things. If I refresh them. Well, I don't think I didn't save my header. My header works. The header component. My header component hasn't got my app navigation. What did I call it? App navigation. Must have called it like that. There you go, navigation works. And if I load my navigation, oh, I did app navigation, my header. My app header is here. It's my header. Ah, silly me. I had two headers, so I'm just gonna delete this header. The old previous header. Uh, let's get rid of that. And let's do that in the modules. Um, yeah, beautiful. Confused to invoke two different kind of headers. So I have got the logo, the navigation works, which is part of the another navigation. A load dynamic data here, sidebar works, and footer. Angular always loads your components with the name of the component, space works. Now, it may be difficult to understand seeing it or maybe understand the, the split of it. But if I would do, I think I'll just do inline styling for you guys to see. Uh, I think it will be much more easier to understand what it's mentioned about. And then, um, I 
just put this header here and then I'll go in my header and I'll just wrap this up as well. Now you kind of understand more of the, that would be my header, that would be my, my body and this is my footer. This is a beginning of how do you structure components in, in Angular. So you would literally have, as we mentioned just before, you have a, a layout, a containers, a component and a module. In React, it's a little bit different. So we talk about these classes and in, and it's true, in I don't know if this mentioned before in a video or not, but React you would inherit you would inherit classes. In Angular you don't inherit classes. You normally pull them by the selector into other classes. I mean to other components, and then it renders it. And what you do is render a module, and then that module pulls in the right component based on the routing path, and then it pulls in the little components following it. Um, but I just wanted to explain to you about what a class is and how inheritance. In, in React, we talked about headers and how do you pull a header in AppJS. Um, more building a structure in Angle uh, in React is, is more of it. It's close to it. You can have the same folder structures. Um, but I think the structure here is... I could do the same explaining you. And I think what I'll do is I'll just take a little break because this is taking me more than two and a half hours to get it through. So I'm going to take a little break and I'll continue in the next series of how would I do the same thing into React or how would I structure it. And hopefully this video that I've done right now is not such a messy thing that you guys go, whoop, I, this, is, this, is, this is not for me. I hope you guys keep continuing and it does make sense and it's, it's, it's good. It's good content wise. If anything, I'll cut it up and I'll add some bloopers or something for fun. Anyway, guys. So to, I thought about not kicking it short, well, to not stopping the video, I thought why not go ahead and create, replicate the same thing for React and then able to explain the same thing and give you a little bit more heads in and out of what's happening. So I've gone ahead and I did some coding um, so I can now explain to you what I've done uh, to keep it short a video. So I've created a layout component, which was here before. Um, no, the layout's not here. So what happened before is we had a, App JS component, we was just rendering here um, something. And just walk it back through to, uh huh. Just saying that I've imported something and not been using it. Uh, address something. And I just need to wrap it up in the div. There you go, something. There you go. So, this was the default we had before. And what I did is I've created a layout um, component. So it, in React, you're not gonna have these um, components as directive services. You don't have these kind of naming conventions or decoratives. It's all of it is just pure uh, component. And then I can explain you more about functional. But what I did for now is I just created a layout component. I created these folders the same, layout containers components. And in layout component, I create a layouts one and I imported a three more header footer sidebar. And then I stuck these imports here of the class component. And then in my containers, I created a sidebar, a header and a footer. All of the same thing. But in my header, I return a navigation component and my footer, I return also a navigation uh, component which is if I go into my component navigation, I have just a list, a menu list. So navigation menu would be used the same for the footer and for the header, it's just the styling would change. And if you would use the same thing. And in layout, so you would drag, you pull in the layout component into the app.js, layout component app.js, and that would actually then render your layout for your header, sidebar and footer, which would use the styling. I also got a header.js here file, I can delete that, which I don't need it. Delete the trash, amazing. 
And I've got these three file folders here and I've got one layout. If I was that save, uh, layout is not defined. Let's go to our app.js and enable layout. Oops. And now that renders us the menu in the top and in footer and a sidebar. Um, just thinking if I can switch. Okay, beautiful. So I don't have to swipe twice for you guys. So these are components. So everything in React is just a component. You can have it as a function returned layout. So as a navigation, instead of doing these classes where you import React and then a component, you can actually have a function, which is basically having a function and returning your navigation. And then that would return basically, instead of the rendering, which comes, you can return it like that. would still render the same thing. You still have a function, right? And still HTML. But the difference is in, so in React you can do the functions and functions you use when you have components without state, that you're not using the state. And what you know what you do is you pass the data from the parent component into the child component with the navigation, and then that renders the data into it. And I think I'll talk to that in the next lesson about how do you speak to uh, children components. For now, I just wanted to show you um, the same structure, the same logic you can keep in React or structuring your files, having layouts, containers, and components, and how to reuse them. Um, I think I'm going to go in more deep depth in the next lesson explaining you the uh, difference between functional and a class component for the React. I think this lesson allowed us to cover a lot about Angular. Um, you have a little bit understood um, the structure, uh, and modules, how they do in Angular, and React is just basically uh, you're importing another component, uh, you're creating a, a class component, you're exporting the class component, which we saw here, and then you're importing it into your parent component and you're using it by the attribute, by actually the class name. Whereas Angular, you're going to be using it by referencing the, the selector name. So app default goes into your parent component. Now, I think, I think that's... A great topic to be close. Um, there's two subjects we started, initialization and uh, difference between components and actually talking about classes. Um, I think it's a good uh, covered basics. Now we can move into more depth of uh, next thing is how do, you do, how do you pass data from the parent to the child and a little bit focus about I think root to module on so we can start creating these paths and start thinking about how do you structure features in Angular and how do you actually uh, structure um, the same logical features in React. Uh, so you can have these two kind of mindsets. Well, for now, guys, whew, this has been a long journey. It's been a long chat. I'm just checking the time that's saying that, yes, it's been more than two hours of documenting this. I'm pleased that I've got this through. Um, I think I could have done a better job of it. Um, if I have the time, maybe I can repeat this. But for now, this is Chris. This is your JavaScript buddy. And thank you for coming to see my show. Well, thank you for coming and seeing my series. If you do like this series, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope these videos are in good quality and you enjoy them, guys. See you next one. Bye-bye.